seven minutes away from launch. Uh, the main thing we are still working is that range clear. Again, we have to make sure boats, airspace, everything is cleared out of the way for our ascent corridor, basically the Gulf of Mexico, where we're launching through uh, before we can actually launch. And so we're working on clearing out just a few more boats. We do have a window, remember. Um, so if we end up holding at like a T minus 40 seconds, we can hold for several minutes, allow those boats to get out of the way, and then we can launch. Our window is from 7 to 7.30 central, so we don't have a huge amount of time today, uh, but we do have some margin if we need to work with it to, uh, to still get off the ground today. For now, though, uh, we're coming up on finishing prop load on both vehicles. Uh, header tanks are pretty much topped out on the ship. Those are going to be used for its landing burn. Um, and again, we're going to be closing out all of the prop load at about T minus three minutes, 20 seconds for the ship, and then just 30 seconds later for booster. Uh, one kind of cool thing to talk about. So the folks in launch control behind me, after liftoff, they're going to have some pretty special tasks today. If we're going to go through with the catch, uh, they're going to be doing some really detailed inspections just visually of all of the different tower systems. A lot of those things that we upgraded just to make sure that we are in the right posture uh, to actually proceed with the catch. So they'll be working kind of fast and furious uh, behind the scenes to inform the flight director's manual command to send the booster back. So if we if we hear that command being sent, uh, that's going to be just, uh, the roof's going to come off. That's going to be a really exciting moment. Um, so otherwise, if we don't go today, as you guys talked about, there is a chance. And if we don't send the booster back, we'll do a landing burn and a splashdown in the Gulf. And then that's just another landing burn to gather more data, learn more lessons from, and then we'll come back and try the catch again on the next one. But uh, as of right now, we're coming up on five minutes. Uh, there is a chance that we'll hold or extend into the end of our window. So don't be surprised if that ends up happening. But if those boats do get out of the way, we are just about five minutes away from launch. So uh, I'll check back in, in in just a moment, but back over to you, Kate and Jesse. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Our rapid uh, iter iterative development approach has been the basis for all of SpaceX's major innovative advancements, including Falcon, Dragon, and Starlink. Today, we're testing hardware and systems, and we need to know how they perform under the most extreme conditions. We'd much rather find the bugs now during testing than later on when there's more on the line. And to reiterate, we do not, while we do determine an acceptable level of technical risk on our vehicle and pad in order to learn as fast as possible, we accept no compromises when it comes to the safety of the public or our team. So that is to say, this is only the fifth of many future flight tests of Starship before it becomes fully operational. You might remember the Starlink panels that are incorporated into Starship, and you can see them there on your screen, those rectangular panels on Starship's nose cone. Starlink brings us the epic views in space and on reentry, and also helps deliver us the critical flight data engineers need to continue development. In addition to enabling our rapid iteration on Starship, Starlink is also enabling life-saving communication here on Earth. SpaceX is sending tens of thousands of Starlink kits in response to Hurricanes Helene and Milton and providing free service through the end of the year to support recovery efforts. The Starlink team also worked with T-Mobile to activate our direct-to-sell satellites to provide basic texting on T-Mobile and emergency alerts for all phones and carriers of those in affected areas. If a phone connects to a Starlink satellite, it will have one to two bars of signal and show T-Mobile SpaceX in the network name. SpaceX's direct-to-sell constellation has not been fully deployed, so these services are being delivered on a best-effort basis. Starlink is enabling life-saving communication here on Earth and continues to help us push the limits in space. In the short term, by providing great views and real-time data on our next few flights, particular, particularly through re-entry, which historically is a blackout period for all communications. All right, so we're coming up on two minutes, 30 seconds away from launch. It, we were hearing like there was a pretty good chance we were gonna hold at T minus 40 seconds, but surprise, now it sounds like we might not be. So uh, we are just a little over two minutes away. So a couple more things gonna be happening. Uh, we did just close out our propellant load on the ship and the booster. So 
10 million pounds of propellant on that vehicle on the pad here at Starbase, getting ready to go. We're going to start uh, clearing out all of the lines that are basically pushing all of that propellant to the vehicles. Those get cleaned out or cleared out uh, on the ground before we lift off. We're doing some final checks on the vehicle, the thrust vector, the thrust vector control that we're going to use to steer it, um, as well as uh, the guidance system doing its final alignment, just a lot of our, our final checkouts. But uh, we are we are starting to hear that it looks like the range is going to be clear at our liftoff time of 7.25 a.m. Central, 12.25 UTC. So that puts us one minute, 20 seconds away from launch. Still not tracking any technical issues. That range clears the only thing that's been uh, potentially poking at our launch. So I'm going to start to quiet down. We'll hear our flight director for today, Tristan Pierce, give some of the final call outs. As of right now, we are one minute away from liftoff. go for launch. Best words you could possibly hear, 20 seconds away from liftoff. T minus five, four, three, two, one. Vehicles pitching downrange. Booster after chamber pressure nominal. Thirty seconds into the flight, the rumble's just starting to reach us here at launch control. Booster and ship, that avionics is the power, telemetry nominal. Thirty-three Raptor engines. Max Q. Pass through the maximum aerodynamic pressure, the most stress the vehicle is going to see on the way uphill. All right, our next our next major milestone coming up. It's going to be hot staging. We're going to see the engines ignite on ship to push it away from the booster. So hot staging is going to be the next thing coming up. First, we're going to see the booster's engines start to shut down. All but three. We're going to do what's called most engines cut off instead of main engine cut off, because three are going to keep going. And then we're going to see the engines on ship ignite. Right now, the tower team is doing their go, no go. We might hear some really good words soon, too. All right. And still see it up behind me. That is one of the most gorgeous things I've ever seen in my entire life. Booster Coming up on hot staging next. Ship engine There's start up. most engines cut off. Stage separation. 
Booster for stage separate. separation. Total. Hot stage confer separation confirmed. Ship under its own power. I'm seeing six out of six. Raptors lit. Hopefully, I got a booster on the way back to me. I'm going to send it to you guys in Hawthorne. Oh, man. That was absolutely <laughs> incredible. I loved how the crowd. Chamber pressure is nominal. The crowd here in Hawthorne all went ooh at that first <laughs> view of the blue flames from the booster. As you can see there, first stage currently performing, or excuse me, is uh, now making its way back to uh, the launch site. Again, we are. The ship avionics power is on phenomenal. Uh, the booster and the tower are both performing automated checks to make sure we are go for the booster to return to the launch pad for that catch. And once those are complete, the flight director... Booster, booster, friend, shut down. Flight director is going for booster return. And we did hear that the tower is go for catch. So that was one of the big criteria we were looking for. This view we'll here. wait to hear that the we'll wait to hear that the gopher catch has been sent. Beautiful view here from the <laughs> ship. And so exciting to hear that we got a gopher booster catch. That means it's going to be a really exciting morning. Again, the booster is making its way back towards uh, now land um, in order to make that catch attempt in the tower. <laughs> so incredible to see these views. You can see the ship on the right-hand side of your screen. All six Raptor engines are uh, under full power. Once again, the, the ship, excuse me, the booster is making its way back to the launch site. We are going to try and catch it using the chopsticks on the launch tower, the exact same tower that it just launched from just, wow, five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and the booster. Starship on nominal guys, trajectory. I, I can confirm the command was sent for the booster to come back. That is incredible. So I'm looking news. up right now. <laughs> it's it's pretty much right over ahead of us, and we can see it starting to come down. I can't wait for us to hear the sonic boom through Dan's mic. <laughs> right. <laughs> that is going to be incredible. It was so cool to hear the lift off. Uh, and so once again, um, it's successful on-time liftoff of Starship Flight 5. The ship uh, the, has separated from the booster. The booster is there on your screen. It is making its way back to the launch site. We are going to attempt the catch using the chopsticks. We did hear the confirmation that the command was sent to the tower. Uh, we are go for catch. And in order to... Hey guys, we should just be about... 30 seconds away from our landing burn. It's going to happen in three phases. We're going to land 13 engines, burn off all of that velocity. Oh, we can see it coming down through the plume. Booster coming in hot for booster catch. We're going to ignite 13 of those Raptor engines, and this view is incredible right now. You can see how fast this vehicle is moving on the left hand. Landing burn. 13 engines. Landing burn. We're now down to three Raptor engines. We can see those chopsticks now. Thank you. This is absolutely insane. On the first ever attempt, we have successfully caught the Super Heavy Booster back at the launch tower. What an incredible view! Are you kidding me? <laughs> Uh, I don't know about you, but we're, we're losing our stuff Starship up here. <laughs> Guys, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> even in this day and age, what we just saw, that looked like magic. 
Oh, was, wow. Jeb, wow. You, you must have been insane. <laughs> we are still going wild over here, over there. Folks, this is a day for the engineering history books. This is a live view of the Super Heavy Booster as it has just been successfully caught back at the very same launch tower that it just came from. Dan, I love this. You are reflecting exactly what everybody else here in Hawthorne, uh, except maybe a little bit more because you got to see it with your own eyes. How was that? We got it. I mean, like, oh, like. I can't even. I can't even describe that. Oh, by the way, shit. Main engine cut off. Ships in orbit, but I am. I am like shaking right now. That was. Yeah. It. Oh, uh, this is not. <laughs> yeah, I let's, mean, let's it's checking on ship. It's hard to believe that. Starship nominal orbit insertion. All right, exciting news there. It's hard to believe that, you know, Booster isn't the only excitement that we have today. Just confirmation there. A gorgeous view of planet Earth behind uh, ship the ship. Saved. And it is now in, in the orbit that we expected it to. This is just an incredible day. Live views there as the Booster vents some pressures there. That is a live view from the top of the tower <laughs> looking at the chopsticks. <laughs> I am still in disbelief. I'm trying to catch my tears just like the chopsticks caught the booster. <laughs> it has been nonstop <laughs> since liftoff. <laughs> and we are all so excited about everything that's been happening so far this morning. With the booster having completed its job for today, we are going to take a short break for the next 30 minutes, we'll return back at T plus 40 minutes while the ship continues to coast before re-entry. Oh man, and <laughs> as with previous flights, Starlink may actually enable us to talk with the ship through re-entry with no communication blackout. We of course are still testing Starlink during this phase of flight, so nothing is certain, but if we do have views, we'll be sure to bring those to you live.